Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we are now on to our first hot topic. A recent report by Budget reveals that only two states in Nigeria, Lagos and Rivers, are financially stable enough to operate independently of the Federal Accounts Allocation Committee FAC disbursements. The report highlights that the majority of Nigeria's 36 states heavily rely on these monthly federal allocations to fund essential services and maintain operations. Budget urges states to diversify revenue sources to enhance fiscal sustainability amid the fluctuating nature of federal allocation funding. Our guest this morning is Mr. Bolahan Olojede, a finance expert. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Yeah, good morning. Nice to be on the program. Mm. Well, it's disturbing to know in an era where everybody wants a state in their local government, as it were, because the people are still talking about state creation, for budget to come up with this report, which a lot of uh, Nigerians are seeing as a true state of affairs, that only two states, and eventually only Rivers and Lagos, which are in the south, are viable enough to stand on their own without the federal allocation that they go to get monthly. I don't know how you see that kind of a report and what it makes you feel about the viability of our states and the importance even of having these states as many as we are having and clamoring for more. Okay. Um, let me first of all express my, <clears throat> my opinion about the clamoring for states. Most of the clamoring are not about uh, getting things done better uh, or bringing government closer to the people. Uh, they are largely about being able to create a new set of uh, political elites um, who will be in control of the resources of a sub part of, of, uh, of, of an existing state or some existing state. So essentially, some people are saying, um, we're not properly accommodated, uh, some of the elites are saying, we're not properly accommodated in this existing state structure. So let's create one where we can be the champions and be able to control uh, the cookie jar, as it were. That is largely uh, the thinking behind most of the new state creation uh, situation. Now, back to the real matter, which is the viability of state. Uh, budget, incidentally, has done a lot of work in this particular area. Over many years, that has been the situation. A lot of the states are not viable. Um, even, even way back five years ago, report, seven years ago, report by budget, you will see uh, situations in which some of the states rely on the federal government on fact allocation for up to 80 percent of what they spend some up to 70 some to 60 percent of what they spend so essentially if you take that fact away from those states uh they will literally go into bankruptcy some of them will not even be able to pay salary that is how bad those things are uh, and it has remained like that for donkey period so the, 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 the challenge is that this, the existing system sort of supports the kind of result that we are getting from most of the state. Um, and what do I mean by that? We have a situation in which a state rely on the government for 80, 70 percent of what it spends on the federal government for 80 percent, 70 percent of what it will spend on a monthly basis. So at the end of the month, uh, once I'm able to generate up to 20% or 30%, I know I can just send my commissioner of finance, go to Abuja and bring 70%, and we are having fun. So it's a situation in which a, number, a good number of the governors are presiding over the allocation of money that they did not work for. So the, it is no longer um, wealth creation. A lot of them are not creating the wealth they are allocating the wealth that has been gifted them from Abuja. That is essentially what a lot of them are doing. And if we're going to um, get things to become better, we must ensure that it's, it's, it's like looking at an engine with uh, 36 cylinders or 37 cylinders that work. 
and only two of the cylinders are firing properly. How can that kind of a vehicle perform, uh, uh, you know, optimally? Definitely not. That would be a grossly inefficient engine. But that is what we have in Nigeria. 36, 37 cylinders with only two firing properly is a big problem. Yeah, but uh, let's look, it, look at it from uh, a different perspective. Why are the states poor in the first place? Uh, where does the federal government get its money? Is this not the same reason why a lot of people are talking about true federalism, where states will manage their own funds? Do you think that when we get to a point where states manage their own funds and pay a percentage to the federal government, uh, we will be better than this? Don't you think so? Yeah, to a certain extent, yes. But it's actually a lot more complex than that. Um, so people say, oh, it is because they take my resources first to Abuja. And then uh, they, they bring back some for me. The question is, the one that is brought back to you, what have you done? As it is today, without even, the, um, without, without, without even having resource control, some of the revenue that are accruable to some states in Nigeria are bigger than the national income of some countries in West Africa. Meanwhile, these same West African countries, they have airport, they have seaport, they are running their own affairs with less income than some of these states currently get under the, under the uh, uh, non-resource non control situation that we have. So the inefficiency, the, the, the um, inadequate capacity to create wealth uh, that we're talking about goes beyond the issues of resource control. Resource control does not fix an inefficient system. It only makes more money available to the people who are running those systems inefficiently in the first instance. Hmm. Okay. Um, another, another thing is um, the proposed uh, tax reform. Uh, the northern elites, northern governors and uh, leaders especially, are saying that uh, especially the, the sharing formula of the value-added tax and others will be unfair to the North. And uh, the question is, is this not supposed to be a policy that will encourage the, the, the entire states or, of the country to generate more IGR so that they can have a fairer share uh, when it comes to the allocation of monies to them? Is it not supposed to encourage states to sit up uh, now that people are fighting against it because they say it will not be very fair to them or to their region. Don't you, do you think it's a good policy because it will encourage the states or it is a bad policy as the northerners are saying it will be unfair? Okay. Um, let, let me quickly add on some things to the, my previous comment. And that is the fact that I am a firm believer in true federalism. Mm -hmm. And I believe that if we go truly federalistic, those states that are today reliant so much on the federal government will be forced to become less reliant. They will be forced to look inside for how to create their own wealth. That is a reality. And how we midwife that situation, I know we've been trying some backdoor approach or approaches to make it happen. So we've had a situation in which we say, oh, let the money for the local government go straight to the local government. Um, let there be control of certain, uh, uh, what has been on the, on, the, on, on the central, on the, on the, um, on, on the what do you call it, there's concurrent list, then there is the other list. You know, bringing them down to ensure that there is more power to the government that is closer to the people. Uh, we have not been largely successful at most of this initiative, but hopefully along the line, we will get things better. Now, that the issue of VAT that you raised, it, it, still, it still boils down to part of the problem that has been created by the over-centralized uh, situation that we have. So the, the same states that are generating um high internal revenue are also the same thing that are likely to generate higher value added taxation so you take value added taxation you will see abu uh, lagos again will show up you will see fct will show up you will see river state will again show up 
in all those high VAT uh, uh, generation uh, places. So it goes back to the same problem that it is a few <clears throat> of our cylinders that are turning. And when they turn, whatever they generate, you take it to the center and distribute it to the rest of the people. So the more these states can focus inwards rather than thinking about uh, what, what is the share of a VAT coming from another state that will come to me. I should be thinking of what do I have? Uh, how can I create wealth? Let's assume that my state is a country on its own. So what do I have? My people, my resources, and how can I make what I have to create wealth sustainably for my people? That is the kind of thinking that we need to drive. Yes, uh, you know, uh, VAT, of course, the North will complain because uh, for most of the northern states, apart from maybe a state like Kaduna, maybe Kaduna Kanu, um, but, uh, not much VAT is coming from there. But then the state can also look at themselves, a state like, say, Niger. Niger is, is, is bigger than the state of Israel. But when you look at how much money a, a, a state like Israel makes from agriculture or an agricultural technology, you begin to ask, even for exporting vegetable to Europe alone, you'll be, you be asking yourself, so how come uh, a state like Niger State could not simply feed Nigeria or probably most part of West Africa? Because it has the land, fertile, flat. It has the water, and then it can produce. If it produces, it probably can feed uh, 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 half of West Africa, which is that single state alone, you know. So these are the kind of thinking that must be coming to the table to for each state to look at itself and say, what do I have? How can I sustainably create wealth for my people? This is the way of the future. This is the way that is sustainable. The reforms on taxation and all the rest of them will not be by itself able to guarantee that we can get a 36 standard <laughs> of this engine from Nigeria to perform efficiently. Yeah, but when we are talking about uh, federation, the true federalism, um, where will the, the country, the, the national, the, the federal government be at that time? Can we have this federal, uh, true federalism when the resources of the uh, federating units are still in the list that you mentioned, the concurrent list and uh, another list. So uh, is it going to affect it? Is it going to affect the country adversely? What, what it will be the fate of the country in itself uh, when it comes to uh, true federalism? Do you think we can flourish better if we do that, especially from the center? We can definitely flourish better under a true federalism i believe so and the, the reason i am convinced is that we've had something close to that in the same in the history of the same country and from all indications the countries the regions there as they were called flourished better they grew faster they did many things better than they are doing today there was better thinking on the table people had control of their resources and they also had a way of bringing money to the center for things that are of common interest to the nation. So the, the country did better, it grew better in those years. And that is an indication that if we do this properly, we most likely will do better. But we can also look at other countries uh, that we like to, um, to copy. So if you go to the United States, for example, um, where, I mean, they can call themselves a, a speaking of democracy, and the presidential system of government that we are using today was probably largely copied from, from that country. It is flourishing uh, in the U.S. And the, country, the, 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 the question will be, if we do it the right way, why should it not work for us? Of course, because we're not the U.S., um, whatever we need to add, adapt to our own peculiarities, we adapt it, but large, we have done Well, we don't seem to have uh, Bola Horn's uh, audio anymore, but we've been talking about um, the need to go back to uh, true federalism. 
And uh, if the model of yesteryears worked, maybe we should return to that. That's what we're talking about. But the topic that we've been discussing is the disturbing report by budget that only two Nigerian states can survive without a federal allocation. Uh, because uh, all these people, the IGR that is generated, is nothing to write home about. In fact, yesterday on the papers, there was a graphic... Um, uh, uh, there were, there were graphics to show that every state uh, could not um, stand on their own. And we had only 10 states that were on the green line, as it were. Uh, Mr. Bolahorn, we lost your audio for some time uh, now. And um, I'm expecting you to just round off on uh, the thoughts that you had so that we can wrap it up on this segment. What's the way forward and uh, uh, what are we expected to do? So what, what, what I think, you, you were asking how, how, whether, whether I can walk, and I said yes. Um, true federalism can work. We have had it in this country before, uh, pre the 1966 coup. It was actually the 1966 coup that took us unitary because that is what the military understand. It is a command system. Is you know you you, you obey the, the the last order. So uh, and they will definitely run the system the way they understand to run the system. Unfortunately. We have not been able to regulate ourselves out of that system ever since. So the fact that it worked before, we grew better in those years, shows that it can work. If we also take the example of some of the countries that we have copied, for example, the presidential system of government we are, we are using, uh, was largely copied from the United States. So if it is working in the United States, the question is, if we adapt it properly to our own peculiarities, why can it not work better for us? in this country as well. So it's, it's, it's something we can do if we have the will to pursue it. I know we are using some backdoor approaches to see, uh, to test the waters, but we need to wrap things up faster and, and, and deploy uh, uh, something that takes the government closer to the people and we can have uh, a better environment for our democracy. Okay, well, it's a good way to drop that topic right now. It's an ongoing thing. We will keep talking until we get to the point where all the states that claim to be states and viable should show working and then they will also have to manage their own resources and will practice true federalism. We hope that that time we will have a better Nigeria that we can truly be proud of. But this morning, we'd like to say thank you to you, Mr. Olodeje, for coming on the program. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. We've been talking with a financial expert in the person of Mr. Bolahon Olojede, and uh, we were looking at the fact that uh, only two states, according to budget, can stand on their own without the federal allocation. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at the fact that the courts have stopped CBN from releasing allocations to River State. Stay with us. <laughs>